Hello. Have you noticed other people who seem to struggle with addiction the most are either at the very top of society or at the very bottom? A star who has everything surrounded by affection and admiration but can't really trust anyone because everyone wants something from them, a piece of them one way or another. And on top of that, the people around them, they don't even seem to like the fact that they are winning. The ones who have climbed to the top, they can't be around everyone because most feeling that status inequality want to pull them back down to their level. It's a quote often said, it's lonely at the top disconnection. Often they rise to an astronomical height due to a neurotic drive, a compulsion, perhaps a derivative of a trauma from earlier days. But once they have it, once they've touched what they've wanted, the rush, it fades and they realize that it just was not enough. And no matter the height they climb, truly, it was never truly enough. There's always more. Thus often we find in their lack of connection, their growing solitude, the higher they climb, the trauma, it still remains. And the reality they envisioned, where everything would be perfect if they just got that one thing, it wasn't. This is a story we see among so many stars, especially rock stars, musicians, artists of some kind. The rush fades and they realize that it was just not enough. And no matter the height they climb, truly, it was never enough. Thus, often we find in their lack of connection, their growing solitude, the higher they climb, the trauma, it still remains. And the reality they envisioned, where everything would be perfect if they just got that one thing, it wasn't. Thus, unable to fill that void, another form of compensation easily finds its way. One touch of something more sinister, boom, just like that. They are rocketed out of their void into a temporary nirvana, a temporary bliss, a temporary ascension. But of course, for everything gained, there is always a cost for any experience of bliss, any experience of euphoria, contentment, good. There is always a proportional darkness, a proportional suffering. There is no free trip to nirvana. But regardless of the costs, the compensation it provides for a moment that is not enough, no matter how much they climb, all the while a past ever haunting that moment, every time before the mud settles and the demons creep from under, that call amidst a reality that just is not enough, the demand in willpower to just say no, it's not strong enough, the call of the void is just too great. That's what we often find, whether one is at the very top or at the very bottom, the story of escape, the story of compensation, it looks all the same. And whether it be in video games, gambling, narcotics of some sort, whatever the addiction may be, to escape reality one way or another, neglecting one's commitments, neglecting oneself, I've seen this so many times and it's a reality prevalent amongst both those who have nothing and those who have everything. It's as if hell. It can manifest itself at both poles. Thus, what is the answer then? If hell can be found at either extreme, where is it that we should go? Can one be of great accomplishment without being plagued by the same vices? Because at the end of the day, for example, gaming does not have to be bad. Games can actually be very beneficial. The problem comes when one loses balance using video games to compensate for their present reality. Of course. Greatness can emerge from such forms of compensation, but even then, when it eats everything, including your ability to sustain yourself, when the addiction one way or another destroys your health, your mind, further perpetuating a dark environment by destroying the very foundation needed to cultivate a healthy one, that's when it becomes a problem. And what is the result? You go back to the vice for the vicious cycle it reinforces. Because the vice made things worse, you need to do more of the vice to compensate for that worse. What does one do? How does one escape? This subject is very personal to me as I've grown up and seen people in my own life nearly lose their life to the worst kinds of narcotics, then recover clean for over a decade. I've dealt with vices myself and I've seen so many others. The common denominator out of darkness, it is the same. And I see why. All you have to do is look at someone who's very simple, yet feels no urge to commit to any vice. Habib Nurmagomedov. Habib, he still lives in the same house with his mother. He drives the same old Toyota, despite a millionaire status. And I remember, 
After a fight one time, all he wanted for a reward was a cheeseburger with double cheese. My next opponent is very good steak with burger double cheese and with some juice with ice. No, no, no double cheeseburger. Uh, burger with double cheese. This is a little bit different. If you think about it, it makes no sense. After all, Habib Nurmagomedov was born in a ruthless, war-torn mountain. His world was very, very harsh. If anyone, anyone should be traumatized, it should be Habib Nurmagomedov. Yet, under that immense conflict, he seems to show no need for compensation. We're famous, we have money, you know, but we can help people, why not? You know, if you, hand, if you have money in your hand, this is very good. But if money go in your mind, this is very bad. If you help people, why I cannot help him? I'm gonna help him. Where most would have been traumatized, destroyed, ripped apart and haunted by the demons of that world, they would have ended up very lonely and in their solitude if a vice is present. It will make sense to compensate under that turmoil, but... Respect your parents, be your parents very close, this is very important. Parents everything, you know, your mother, your father. It's like I told you guys, when I go to the cage with my father, I feel I go to the cage with the lion, you know. My father was with me, Shamil was with me, Muhammad was with me. Of course, Javier Mendez, Mexican lion. They give me so much energy, you know. Why I am here? Because of my team, my sparring partners, Islam, Omar, Abu Bakr, Zubar, other Islam, everybody, it's like Saigid, Gajid, like we have so, so strong team with the coaches, with support, you know, it's like, that's why I'm here. Habib Nurmagomedov, despite the ruthlessness of his world, he had what very few have, a community of people who love and believe in him, a form of spirituality to aid in his certainty and optimism, discipline and meaning which fuel his fight for his people, his beliefs, his family, and of course, a strong and wise father who guided him through all of it. When you understand, you realize that even in the worst situations, living a very hard life, you can still live a meaningful one, full of contentment. and. At the end of it, the pull of vices is so faint that trading their temporary euphoria in the present moment, even in absolute suffering, is just not worth it. Your present moment is still better. That's the difference. In a hard, hard life, a harsh world, your present moment in that world is still better. And that's the difference. And during a time where people are locked in isolation, building an environment of genuine connection, having a sense of meaning during a time of existential angst, a pull from spirituality, a genuine sense of meaning harmonizing with it, it's just hard for people to have all that right now. It's so easy to fall into a vice during this present time. Even the most privileged right now are decaying mentally and with that mental decay, the environment, their world, it soon starts to fall apart as well. Your world, it is a reflection of your mind. And if you don't have an environment that positively reinforces it, it's very difficult to maintain the correct mindset which further perpetuates that cycle, further perpetuates deterioration. The natural result is picking up some form of compensation. Humans are cause and effect. We have our own willpower to change our destiny, but I truly believe willpower is finite. Thus part of the aim is to ultimately set up an environment that pulls you into a meaningful form of engagement. Willpower is only part of the equation, I believe. You use your will to create a world that will pull you. To be pulled into the world you've used willpower to create. That is the aim. To be caught up in the flow of your discipline and to feel meaningfully rewarded for doing so. That is the aim, I believe. Find a way. It won't be easy. In a time where we must be isolated, just try to find a way to take care of yourself. Meditation. Having friends to talk to even if you can't see them. Find something that spiritually resonates with you. But if you can't, if you have absolutely no choice, take an understanding from Nikola Tesla. Use your solitude. Use your suffering to your advantage. Originality thrives in seclusion, free of outside influences, beating upon us to cripple the creative mind. Be alone. That is the secret to invention. Be alone. That is where ideas are born. If you have no choice but to suffer in solitude, use it to your advantage. Do not let yourself be captivated by vices you know will destroy you. Reflect 
and use your intuition to meaningfully apply that fire. Take care of yourself. The fact you are alive today when countless have passed trying to make it to this point. Everything else has perished to make it to this point. Almost everything. Virtually everything. Yet you are here. Your existence has fought to this impossible point in history. You are here as truly a feat impossible. You are here. Just think about that. If life has been around for about 4 billion years, if that is true, and all that life has been fighting, all that life has been trying to take each other out and dying, everything has died to this point and somehow one sperm cell made it to an egg. If another one did, you wouldn't be here. But that one did. Out of all that life that fought and died, somehow, you ended up here. You fought your way to this point, and that is all encoded into you. Just think about how impossible that is. Think about that and honor that. Honor what you are, and make the most of it one way or another. The antidote to addiction is connection, but if you can't, if you have no choice, take that as a sign for something greater and apply that suffering creatively to your benefit. You can handle this suffering if you can find a way to meaningfully do so. And that's not just words, it's in your DNA. It runs through every fiber of your being. You are an environmental adaptation built to overcome great suffering. Your body is etched with the capacity to do just that, and it's been doing that for billions and billions and billions and billions of years. Honor that. Honor yourself. Stop taking yourself so lightly because that belief in and of itself is making you smaller than you actually are. Comparing relatively to another is nothing. It means nothing in the grand scheme of things. The scarce, precious and enduring marvel that you are, proportional to the universe. Honor that! You owe it to yourself. Honor it! We made it here together. That is a fact, and so, I am honored to share this experience with you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. And until next time. Peace.